I was thinking about my talk. I was thinking about, you know, there's, there's kind of four legs of life, four main parts of our lives. Um, health, our body temple, finances, uh, relationships, both romantic, familial, and others, and work and creative life. Those are kind of the four pillars of, of what's going on with all of us. And as I was thinking about that and the talk title, I realized that I need to remind everyone, including myself, that no matter what is going on in life, you got this. You got this. And so I was thinking about, well, well, why? Why, how can I say that to you? I know there's a lot of things going on with everyone in one part of those four pillars of life that doesn't seem to be very fun or is downright rotten. And I thought to myself, yeah, but we have to remember that we are not our DNA. We are not the statistics that we hear about in the news, we are, what are we? What are we? Well, that's what I wanna talk about first. Who are we? Who are you? There's a, a quote by unknown, <laughs> whoever that is, very famous person, obviously unknown. They have a lot of quotes. An unknown said, the same boiling water that softens the potato hardens the egg. It's what you're made of, not the circumstances. And when that quote popped up for me, I thought, yeah, who are we? We need to sometimes during one of those pillars of uh, life, not working out as we have thought it should, we have to remember who we are first. That is the primary thing. What, what and who are we? Well, I wanna remind you of that. I probably remind you every week, but you, do you know who you are? You are an individualization of the same creative power, the same energy, call it what you will, that created everything, the whole universe. I mean, think about that. I know that can be, um, maybe overwhelming a little bit, sort of like when, we, when we're talking about billions or trillions of dollars, that could be overwhelming. And that's a hard thing to grasp onto for most people. But I think it's essential that we always go back to, to number one, to the oneness of all, to who we are, who you are. That power that created the planets, the power of the Big Bang, whatever you want to call it, is in you right now. That's who you are. And you get to decide if you're going to get softened like the potato if you're in hot water in one of these pillars of life or if you're going to um, harden up and like the egg does when this boiling water is in your, in your pillar of life, whichever it is, finances, health. Are you going to harden yourself and know what it is that you get to do, which is choose? You get to choose what you're going to do in that situation, good, bad, or indifferent. The same boiling water that softens the potato hardens the egg. Which one are you going to be? You are all of it. Then I started thinking about, wait a minute, what about focus? We got to focus in life. What are we going to focus on? Well, Carlos Castaneda wrote, we either make ourselves miserable or make ourselves strong. The amount of work is the same. So what are you focusing on? You focusing on, like I've said before, the woe is me life or the wow is me life. 
Are you focusing on the negative? Now, I'm not saying you don't look at the negative. You want to look at the negative and go, okay, there's something I got to do about this. And I got to start in mind. I got to start with knowing who I am. And then I got to start with, and then I got to step into what it is I need to do and move through and take action with. How do I bust through SOAR and Zoom? That's what I focus on. I don't focus on, oh gosh, this is awful. Oh, yeah, there may be a little bit of that. That's okay. You can have a little bit of a, um, a little bit of a venting, a little, even a little bit of a woe is me, but it's how long you stay in that. A minute. Give yourself a minute, five minutes maybe. But then you start realizing, wait a minute. I am the individualized power of the Big Bang, of that singular energy that created all. Wait a minute. I can allow myself through my intuition, through my contacts, through the contacts of my contacts, to relieve myself of this dis-ease in my life, wherever that is, in our body temple, in our finances, in our work and creative life, in our relationships. Like Wayne Dyer says, if you believe it'll work out, you'll see opportunities. If you don't believe it'll work out, you'll see obstacles. So what do you want to focus on? The opportunities, because there's infinite opportunities in the universe, or the obstacles and the statistics and the uh, diagnosis and the prognosis and the, the, oh, my DNA says this, that, or the other. So this must show up in my life. Or um, I've always had bad relationships so, re relationships, so I will continue to have bad relationships. You buy into that, you'll see the obstacles. The obstacles will show up for you. No problem in that, because the universe is only going to bring you what you declare. And if you declare, um, every time I get into a romantic relationship, X, Y, Z happens, then that's what you'll get, negative or positive, or a combination of both. You won't allow yourself to see the red flags or take action because of the red flags because you're allowing the obstacles to stick with you. You're focusing on the obstacles being a part of your life. Which brings me to purpose. What's our purpose? So we know we want to focus on the good, even when the non-good shows up. We want to focus on the good because that brings in the opportunities to uh, bust through soar and zoom those uh, those uh, not so great thoughts or experiences, whatever those are in any of the pillars of life. And we want to remember who we are. We have the power to do this. No matter what has happened before in your life, you have the power and the, the will and the choice to move through it. So, but what is your purpose? Nietzsche said, uh, uh, he who has a why to live can bear almost any how. So what is your why? What is your why? Is your why part of who you are, who you truly are? I'm not talking about your job. I'm not talking about your supposed social status or your economic status or where you live or how you were brought up. I'm talking about your essence, your very essence. So like Nietzsche said, um, why do you want to live? What's your purpose? Is your purpose to be happy? Is your purpose to be rich? Is to your purpose to enrich yourself and thus others with the, with the talents that you have been given or the talents that you have um, gone and gotten for yourself? You need to have a purpose. The divine is within you right now. It's not going to go away. It's not going to go away. It's what you do with it. Your personal purpose in life. Now, when things happen, you know, I know we have reactions. 
and reactions are usually based on some sort of trigger, psychological trigger from past experiences or some something we've decided we are going, we have learned and going, going to keep in our lives. And Charles Swindle, and this is very interesting. I didn't know who Charles Swindle was, but he's a um, evangelical uh, a preacher. He wrote this, life is 10% what happens to me and 90% how I react to it. And if you've been with us before, you know I talk about frequently and have done probably several talks about reacting versus responding. That when we react, we are most likely um, doing so through past triggers, junk ideas of some, this sort of an or another, uh, things we've learned that really don't serve us, probably never served us, but don't serve us any longer. And we act through that versus taking a breath, because you can, you know the feeling, you, you know the feeling you've, I know you have felt the feeling of, I'm going to react to something and this is pissing me off or this is really making me super sad. Um, and it's not necessarily because of the experience or the words that are being said, but our, our reaction to it because of our feelings about or um, what is behind the feelings about what the person said or is doing that pisses you off or makes you sad or makes you feel like you're not enough and all that stuff. But if we take a moment and take a breath so that we can respond, so that we can open up and allow our intuition, I'm pointing to my gut, our intuition to speak to us and let the divine speak through us, we find ourselves responding. Take a moment. Take that moment. You'll feel it. You'll feel your body tighten up. You'll you'll feel the the um, the rage kind of vibrating in your head when you feel those things. You take a moment before you say something or do something, so that you are responding versus reacting. Especially when somebody says something about you at you that is not. That is not cool. That is not nice. We got to remember that in a fabulous book by this title. <clears throat> what you think of me is none of my business. What you think of me is none of my business. As Confucius said, our greatest glory is not in never failing or falling, but in rising every time we fall or fail. So it's going to happen. Somebody's going to say something. Somebody's going to do something. And <clears throat> you're going to take it personally. For whatever reason, I'm not judging that. It's what we do after we've taken it personally. Do we allow that to inform us, to validate or invalidate us? Or do we move through that and, and know that what you think of me is none of my business? I don't care if you're my boss. <clears throat> I don't care if you're my mate or partner. I don't care if you're my best friend. What you think of me is none of my business. What I think of me is all the business that there is. People are going to get pissed and depending on their personality, um, lash out at you and uh, trigger you. But what do you think about yourself? and your response based on what you think about yourself and who you know you are. Do I need to go through that again? Who you know you are. That individualization of the divine, my friends, the divine. How much more powerful can you be? When you know that, then you can respond. Now, I get it. I get it. You know, I get the whole shadow self thing. And of course, I use, I talk about self talk all the time. And as Walt Whitman said, keep your face always towards the sunshine and shadows will fall behind you. That doesn't mean they necessarily go away all the time. That shadow 
those junk ideas, that stuff that you've accepted because usually because of negative stuff, which is where the shadow comes from, negative stuff, your upbringing, things like that, um, people, things that have been traumatic in your life, totally get it. Not downplaying that in the most, just reminding you that you have the power to put that stuff behind. Now, it may take a lot of spiritual practice or a little spiritual practice. It may take a little therapy. It may even take a pharmaceutical or two for a short time. That doesn't matter. Allow your intuition to show you those opportunities to bring the perfect experts, whether it's a, a spiritual counselor or, or a, a psychological therapist or even a psychiatrist or whatever medical person or uh, a life coach or something like that, that will show you, that will remind you who you are and the power that you have. Here's something, a great... Here's something Neil uh, Gaiman, the, the author, great author, wrote, fairy tales are more than true, not because they tell us that dragons exist, but because they tell us that dragons can be beaten. Your shadow self can be beaten. You can live a life of looking in the sunshine and allowing your shadow to be behind. Your shadow may be even to push you forward, to bring you forward, to inspire you, to provoke you to better actions, to better thoughts, to better ideas. There's a gentleman named Og Mandino. Uh, he, his most famous book is The Greatest, Greatest Salesman in the World, I believe it is. It's a great book. He's written several. He said, I will love the light for it shows me the way. Yet I will endure the darkness because it shows me the stars. When we learn from the darkness, then we can move forward with only the sunshine in our face. Busting through and soaring and then zooming through our best life. Whatever that looks like. You get to decide what that looks like, not me. And we do it one step at a time sometimes. Sometimes we have to, as the Buddhists say, take one step at a time. Go back into kindergarten mode if you have to. And kindergarten mode is when you go back to remembering who you are, going back to the basics. Like Napoleon Hill said, if you cannot do great things, do small things in a great way. Do small things in a great way. Don't allow yourself to be so overwhelmed by taking these giant steps. Take little steps and allow them to um, add up to the giant step. Sometimes I'll, I'll look at something that I have to do, something I need to write, some form I have to fill out that's pages and pages long. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, this is going to take so long. And uh, one question at a time, one one uh, part of the writing at a time, a chapter at a time, and do it well. And watch yourself quickly get to the end and do the overall great thing, the big thing. It adds up to the big thing. There's a Japanese proverb that says, fall seven times, stand up eight. So if you if you see yourself keep falling and keep um, not succeeding, get up. You know, I've talked about this before and there's so many examples. Um, Colonel Sanders with Kentucky Fried Chicken, what was it? A couple of thousand times he heard no. Or Abraham Lincoln, that's a, that's a very, another famous um, story about seemingly failure. I mean, this guy had a nervous breakdown. He had um, his, his wife passed away. His first wife passed away. He lost uh, numerous elections. He failed numerous businesses and yet finally became one of the, if not the greatest president we've ever had. 
in this in the United States. Oh, that's a great story. You got to go back. I've talked about it. I've told the story, but he fell many times. Colonel Sanders fell many times, and they got up because on the eighth time it happened for them. And there are less famous people who have done the same thing. Let me ask you a question. What music do you hear? Now, I'm not talking about on the radio or on your, uh, your phone or I'm not talking about that music, although that's great music. That's great music too. I'm talking about the music you hear in your mind. Do you hear the music of I can succeed? Do you hear the music of um, this may be difficult, but I know I can do it? You can do it, by the way. What voices do you hear? What voices, like I was talking about before, do you focus on? Here's another quote from Nietzsche. And those who were seen dancing were thought to be insane by those who could not hear the music. Do, the, do you hear the music of the divine that is within you? Do you hear the music of the infinite possibilities that are there in the universe waiting through the law of cause and effect, the law of attraction, whatever you want to call that law, to bring a new fabulous experience into your life? Do you hear that music? Are you dancing to that music? Well, you should. You really should. You really should take the time through a spiritual practice, whatever spiritual practice you enjoy that really um, fills you, that feeds your soul. Hear that music, hear that music of the infinite possibilities that are there that you can attract because you are the magnet to attract it. And you are the magnet to bring people, ideas, uh, corporations, whatever needs to, medical people, whatever needs to support you in this experience. Because they're all out there. They're all out there waiting for you to decide, to declare, to be who you are, and to attract them into your life. You got to bust through Soar and Zoom, my friends. Bust through Soar and Zoom no matter what. Good stuff, not so good stuff. There's always more to get. And that's exciting. That's exciting. Another thing Richard Bach wrote was what the caterpillar calls the end of the world, the master calls a butterfly. Think of that. Be excited to go on to the next thing. Not bummed out because oh, I thought I was on top, but now there's another top. Don't follow that idea. Don't follow that idea. Allow that experience, good, bad, or indifferent, to be itself and be in the now for the next exciting experience. Don't you like adventures? Don't you like, um, and maybe you don't like to travel, but if you have traveled and if you've ever gone to the Grand Canyon, then you see the magnificence of this, this hugeness, this, this power, what an adventure that is. Your life can be that adventure as big as and beautiful and powerful as the Grand Canyon. You got this. You got this because you got the power, my friends. You got the power. So you're going to be a caterpillar many times in your life. But the great thing about that is that you're going to also be a butterfly many times in your life. How fabulous, how fabulous that is. This gentleman, he's a, um, I don't know what he officially is, but he's an inspirational speaker. Let's put it that way. His name is Simon Sinek. And he wrote, people who wonder if the glass is half empty or half full are missing the point. The point is that the glass is refillable. Your glass is refillable no matter what's going on in your life. No matter what the prognosis or the, or the diagnosis is, no matter what or how long the divorce took, no matter what the numbers are in your bank account or investments today or yesterday or because of 
what's going on in the financial world, no matter what, um, what is happening in your job, that glass is always refillable. No matter if you only see things as half full and kind of kind of get too attached to the negative and that things can't get better and the statistics of because of where you were born or the education you have or this, that, or the other that you can't get ahead. Or even whether you know that the glass is full and that your life is full. There's always room. There's always room to fill it with more, more water, more divinity. Well, not more divinity in that you don't have it all already. It's that your awareness and your use and your awakenedness to it, to the divine power that is within you right now, to the biggest gift we all have i don't care how talented you are how smart you are the biggest gift is that we are always at choice we are always at choice to be that magnet to that experience we want to have and that experience we have decided and declared to have the point of all of this is no matter what is going on in your life good bad or indifferent we can always bust through SOAR and zoom into the next and greatest experience because there's always a greater experience. Not because it necessarily makes you more money, makes you more healthy, makes your relationships better, makes your work or creative life better, but because it makes life more adventurous and fun and more happy and more successful and more prosperous and more abundant. There's always more. It's a universe full of opportunities. That glass of yours, no matter how successful or quote unquote unsuccessful you are or feel you are or society says you are, but of course we know who cares what society thinks because it's none of your business what society thinks. The point is the glass is always refillable. You got this, my friends. You got this. You are the divine incarnate right here right now as whoever you are whatever you do you got this and i know it and if you don't know it yet i know it for you until you pick it up and take it and run for it have a most succulent succulent life mm. namaste my friends thank you so much